Welcome back everyone. It's time once again to talk about some more pickups. So let's get right to it. So first up is a follow-up to a pickups video the wife and I did. We hit up a bunch of antique stores and all this kind of stuff, and it's weird that, yes, we're finding a lot of good stuff at antique stores. But this was the ultimate find for me, and that was the Atari Pong. At the time, I didn't get the chance to test it. Um, unfortunately, the um, I did talk about in the video the battery compartment. They left the batteries in there. It, it was a mess. It was dirty. But I did order the uh, AC adapter for it. Even got the box. Isn't that awesome? And it worked! So I'll admit, I, I paid more for this than I should have without knowing for the fact that it worked. But you know what? I wanted it really badly and hey, it worked out. Can't complain. All right, let's get to the games. So I'm gonna fly through some newer games. First up, Killer Queen Black on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, if you've never played this game before, I highly recommend it. It's kind of addicting and I I get really intense when playing this game. So if you've never played it before, it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated at first. There's a lot going on. You can either play as the queen where you can attack the other queen or attack other characters, or you can play as workers where you have different roles. You can ride a snail to a goal to win, or you can fill your hive with these berries. It is a little complicated, but you know, there is a tutorial for it and everything. It's fun, check it out. Another Switch game. Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince. Not gonna lie, I've never heard of Trine 1, 2, or 3, but this game's kind of fun. It's it's definitely one that the, the wife and I have enjoyed playing together. It's very puzzle-based. You have three different characters that you can switch between that have different powers that, you know, allow you to progress through the level. I really like the art style. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah, check it out. Next up is a game I didn't know anything about. Uh, I just bought it because it was cheap. Um, may have been free, I'm not sure. But, uh, Hellmutt, the badass from Hell. So I thought this was gonna be more of a platform game, but boy was I wrong. Um, but it is cool, it's got the old, like, pixelated art style, which I always love. And it kind of reminds me of, um, The Binding of Isaac, in a way. But, uh, I haven't played too much of it, but from what I played, I enjoyed it, so I'll come back to it. Dead by Daylight. I literally only bought this game because a buddy of mine has been bugging me about it. And uh, they recently released a um, Silent Hill DLC for it, which I was pretty excited about. It looked pretty badass. And it is, it's is—it's a fun game. You can either play as a survivor and you try to avoid being killed, or you can play as the killer and go around killing people. Next up, we have Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection. Now, I'll admit I do own all of these games, but I wanted to go back and play them again for research for a further down the road video I plan on doing. But, you know, I thought it'd just be convenient to have it all in one package. And it was relatively cheap, so what the hell. Cool. Move on. All right. Ho. Oh. Oh. Ho. The Last of Us, Part 2. I thought about doing a review on this game, but I feel like the hate for it's kind of balanced out in a way. If you didn't know, that the day this game came out, after like a couple hours after it's released, there was just bad review after bad review after bad review. And people could understand how because it's like a 20 to 30 hour long game. And, you know, there's some controversy about this and that and this and that. Whatever. The game is not bad. If you like the first Last of Us, I do recommend checking it out. The only thing I will say I didn't like was the fact that half the game you play as a different character. A character that wasn't even in the first game. But it does tie together nicely in the end. But, I don't know. I mean, I liked Ellie. I was expecting to play as Ellie the entire game. And after a while, I just kind of lost interest playing as this character. But, yeah, I, I, I get some of the controversy. I can see how some people would be about it. But I enjoyed it. Again, nowhere near as good as the first one. But that's just, that's a tall order in my opinion. Okay, next. Mod Nation Racers. So I played this on the PSP a long time ago when I still had a PSP. I don't have one anymore. Um, that was before I started collecting. But... Uh, definitely very Mario Kartish. It's a kart racer, but there's a lot of customizing you can do. Like you can create uh, your own driver and like your cart and all this kind of stuff. And I think you can, yeah, you can build your own track. Uh, kind of an underrated game. Not many people talk about this, and I really enjoyed it. 
So yeah, check it out if you can. Fun story, there was one day where um, I got an email about GameStop. Again, the reason why I have all of these newer games is because GameStop just keeps giving games away. They had like, it was like buy six games for 10 bucks. Like, how do you pass that up? How? So I found some games, but I should have known there was a catch because three of the games I got were in like the generic cases and I can't have that. But thankfully I took them to a GameStop here in town and a guy really hooked me up on a really good deal, surprisingly. But let's talk about those games real quick. First up, The Division on the PS4. I know nothing about this game. I remember a lot of people talking about it a couple years ago. Um, it, whatever. Again, cheap. Uh, Saints Row 4. Uh, this was one of the ones that I traded in for, which, hey, worked out pretty well, I guess. Um, then, <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. I picked up, oh, not that game. Um, Mass Effect. So, I played the first Mass Effect years ago. I think I had, like, Gamefly or something, and I just couldn't get into it. There was too much talking, and I just wasn't in the mood for that. But for some reason, recently, I wanted to go back and play them again. I know a lot of people love these games. So, yeah, I got 1, 2, 3, and Andromeda. But uh, I did start playing the first one, and you know what? I've kind of enjoyed it. I've been looking for a game, like, at night, when I'm about to go to bed, just to kind of relax and just chill, and it's, it's kind of worked out. But what I want to talk about was the um, Mass Effect 3 was one of the games I was trying to get, obviously, and it was in the generic case. The guy literally hooked me up with the Collector's Edition. And, uh, yeah, at no extra cost. Which um, probably wasn't good for them because I looked it up online and it's like 30, 40 bucks, maybe more. I don't really remember, but, you know, you get the awesome steel case and all this kind of stuff. And there's like an art book or something, but, man... I just love these collector's editions, you know? How can you pass these up? So the last newer game is the God of War Saga. I did not know this existed, but this has God of War 1, 2, and 3, as well as the Origins Collection, which were the, um, the, the two games on the PSP. And I've played all these games before. I own God of War 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I don't own the Origins Collection. I don't have a PSP at the moment. But just like Uncharted, I've wanted to go back and play these games again for a future video and hey convenience next up video games monthly i have not talked about video games monthly for a while i kind of ran out of ideas on like goofy unboxing videos so i just kind of gave up but let's just fly through what i got this month and by that i mean the month of august because this probably won't be out until god knows when but uh first up we got what is it shining in the darkness um, you know, I can see how people could enjoy this game. I'm not big on it. I'm not big on like turn-based style combat. It's just not for me. Sorry. Next, uh, Army Men, Sarge's Heroes. This, um, this could have been a really good game, but I just could not get into it. The controls are kind of wonky and yeah, it is what it is. Next, <laughs> Tamagotchi Roll. This is a, uh, Japanese N64 game. I have no idea what the hell is going on in this game. I know what a Tamagotchi is. I grew up with those. I didn't really have one, but I knew of them. But, um, yeah. Something's going on. There's a Japanese writing. I don't I can't read it. Um, Stealth on the NES. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a fan of these games. I don't like these classic flying shooting games like this first person, you know, like Top Gun. It just... I don't like them. Sorry. But... A game I did like, and I'm surprised I didn't have this game. I remember playing it. I don't think my grandmother had it. I think um, someone else I knew had it. But I remember playing it from time to time, and that is Marble Madness. And you know what? It's still a lot of fun to go back and play this game. I can't recommend it enough. It's just, I mean, it's challenging, but it's fun. Next up is a game that kind of got lost in my pile here. It should have been with the newer games. But uh, U-Star 2 for the Xbox 360. If you've never played this game before... I highly recommend it. If you've got friends over and you're having a couple of drinks, some wild shenanigans are bound to happen. So basically, if you've never heard of this or never played it, you basically reenact a scene from a movie and you use the Kinect so you're in the movie. It looks awful, don't get me wrong, but it is a lot of fun. You can either play out the part, like you can read the script perfectly or you can even ad lib if you want and then you get to watch it um, back. And you know what, for the price, like it's, they had it for $2.99. It actually rang up at like 99 cents for some reason. You can't go wrong. For that kind of price, what do you have to lose? I mean, it's there's 80 scenes to pick from. 
it is a lot of fun. Check it out if you can. Next up is WWE Day of Reckoning on the GameCube. I don't pick up very many GameCube games, but I need to fix that. But I remember um, there was one particular wrestling game on the GameCube that I really enjoyed, and I don't remember which one it was, and I don't think I have it yet. So I, I can't remember if it was this one, but the wife and I did play it, and you know what? It was fun. Like, we, we it just ended up with us beating up the ref, which was pretty hilarious. The ref will eventually start fighting back, which is just great. But uh, you know what? I, I kind of want to go back and talk about some wrestling games that not many people talk about because everyone talks about like you know no mercy or the smackdown series but there's some other good ones out there and i don't know we'll see if this one maybe makes the list next up is a yard sale find and you know what even if i own a game if it's cheap and i find it at a yard sale i'll typically pick it up but uh this was a shock uh boom blocks on the wii this um steven spielberg was involved in this game and you know what it's actually a lot of fun the wife and i had a great time with it it reminds me of something but i can't think of what uh, if you know let me know in the comments because th there's a certain game that i'm thinking of and i don't know I, I i can't i can't figure it out but you know what for a wii game a game that i've never heard of it's pretty good i'm not gonna lie i really enjoyed it uh, two Wii games I didn't enjoy. I found these at one of the antique stores the wife and I went to. Uh, Mini Desktop Racing. This was just awful. Like, I, I, I just, you know what? It has potential because it's kind of cute, you know, because, you know, you're like a little matchbox car or something, but the controls are just, just awful. Just awful. Uh, Summer Sports. Paradise Island. I, awful. Just, just bad. There was one on here, what was that, I think Horseshoes? For some reason, that was the one that kind of caught my attention, but I don't know. It, th there was a lot of potential in here because, you know, a lot of the games are good, like Badminton, Volleyball, Miniature Golf, but uh, yeah, it's just, it fell short. But what do you expect? Next, another GameCube game, surprisingly, 1080 Avalanche. Uh, I loved the 1080 game on the N64. And I had never played this before. And you know what? I kind of enjoyed it. I will say the one thing that bothers me about 1080 is after all of the Tony Hawk games I've played, it's hard to adjust to this now because I, I want to play it like Tony Hawk because it's become second nature and it doesn't play like that. But you know what? I still enjoy them. Next up, um, while the wife and I were out of town, we were staying at a hotel and I just happened to like pull up on my phone to see if there was like a game store nearby. And sure enough, there was a game store like 0.5 miles from the hotel. And I was like, I'm there, dude. It was a pretty cool store. I actually had to take the wife there because it had video games. It had tabletop gaming, if you're into that kind of thing. It had a bunch of movies and DVDs. I had records, toys, really cool store. And I found these, couldn't resist because they were kind of cheap. And they were complete in box 32X games. And I have a weird obsession about having a complete in box 32X collection because it seems reasonable. First is Zaxxon's Mother Base 2000. I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea how to get past one particular part in this game, but aside from that, it's 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 okay. It's it's mediocre. It's 32x. What do you expect? Um, next, Shadow Squadron. Again, I'm not a fan of these like first-person flying shooter games, and especially when they're in space, it's just so bland and boring. And I just, I mean. Does anybody really enjoy this stuff? I, I don't. Okay, another game I got at that store. Dementium, The Ward, on the DS. I have not picked up very many DS games, but what caught my attention was this is Doom 3 meets Silent Hill, Be Afraid. Uh, that was like, that was it. I was like, oh, I'm buying this. And you know what? It definitely has a very Silent Hill vibe which makes sense because this game was apparently pitched as a Silent Hill game. The one thing that I really don't like about DS games, it's kind of the same thing I have a problem with the Wii, is like you get this gimmick and then you overuse it. And sometimes you just want to play a game like normal. But you, you do have to use like the stylus to like look around and all this kind of stuff. And that kind of can get kind of cumbersome after a while. But you know what? It's It kept my attention. It really did. And I actually look forward to playing more of it. It seems like a pretty cool game. So, all right. Stack Up. I actually found Stack Up at a local store, and I can't even play this game. I have Rob, I just don't have the parts, but I mean, how can I pass it up? It's Stack Up. 
So, this game I didn't know existed, and obviously I'm not dumb. I wasn't expecting this to be like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, but I was like, hey, wait, there's another Mike Tyson boxing game? I'll be damned. It sucks. It's just, it's bad. The wife and I played it together, and you know what? Maybe it's because I'm spoiled, because I really did like Knockout Kings 2000. I played that game a lot, and this one just... So the last three games just happen to be imports. Uh, the first two I was surprised to find at a store in town because I don't come across very many imports out in the wild. Uh, this one, just bad. Maniac Pro Wrestling for the PC Engine. I I don't even know how to describe this game. I'm just gonna let the the, the, the gameplay just, just, I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say about it. I hated it, it sucked. This one, though, didn't suck. Now, I already had this game on the Genesis. I really like this game. I never played it as a kid, but I think I got it on the Genesis from um, Video Games Monthly, I believe. And I was like, oh my god, I love this game. It's so much fun. But there was a uh, PC Engine CD version of it, and that is Bonanza Brothers. And you know what? It's cool. It's Bonanza Brothers. I don't, I, you know, I just, I was shocked to see it on the PC Engine CD, and I don't have very many... PC Engine CD games. And it was, you know, relatively eh, affordable, I would say. Last up is the one and only complete in box Super Famicom game I have. And that was kind of one of the reasons I bought it. I found it on eBay. The wife and I stumbled upon this game and I thought it was cute. It was kind of fun. And I thought, what the hell, I'm going to buy it. And that is, what is it, Poppin' Twinbee on the Super Famicom. So this is pretty much an overhead shooter or shoot 'em up, as some people call them. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. Um, very colorful. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I like games like this. But yeah, I was pretty excited to have a complete in box Super Famicom game finally. Well, that's it for this time. Thanks again for watching, guys. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I will see you again real soon.